Good morning, one hope. It's May 7th, 2024. Our passage for today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, all the way to the end of chapter 5. Here is our takeaway for today. Second coming, our reason for living today. Today's passage is 1 Thessalonians chapters 4 and 5. And then for the rest of the week, we will focus on 2 Thessalonians. And there's a reason for uh, why we are looking at them together this week. And it's because they share the same theme, which is Christ's second coming. Eschatology is a fancy word for things about the end, which the Bible talks about. We'll call it the end time theology. The end time theology is about the end, things that will happen at the end. What's going to happen when he comes back for the second time and so on. But one thing we need to keep in mind is that all the things which the Bible talks about regarding the end, the purpose for giving us that information is not merely for us to know about the future, but it's actually more for how we live our life in our present moment. In today's passage, there are conjunctions that appear which show us this. The first conjunction is the word therefore. Chapter 4, verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. But prior to this, what did Paul just talk about? What comes before from verse 13 to 17? There you will read about how the dead in Christ are not lost because when Jesus comes back for the second time, they will rise from their grave and join those who are alive together with them and join Christ here on earth. And therefore, what is the purpose of talking about that? Encourage one another. There may have been there at that church believers who now know about the second coming of Jesus and were worried about those who died even though Christ has not, had not returned. Paul reassures them. They're sleeping in their grave. But when Jesus comes back for the second time, they will be included. And what this means is that even if you die before Jesus comes back for the second time, when he does, you will rise from the grave and you will join him also. So do not worry. With that truth, encourage one another. So the purpose of talking about the end is not to generate fear, but to encourage hope and peace. This is why some of the end-time theology out there is misguided. When it comes to eschatology, the end-time theology, I think within uh, the evangelical Christianity, I think there is room for diversity to a certain extent. And this, text, and this passage, you will read and see that it seems to talk about uh, what you have, might have heard, uh, this doctrine of uh, of rapture. And you can read that, and some interpret today's passage as uh, talking about when Jesus comes back for the second time, believers will be taken up into the air and they will escape the uh, uh, suffering that is to come after Jesus comes back here on earth. But others, there are those who see it uh, um, differently, that this passage is not talking so much about that rapture, but it's talking more about meeting Christ in the air and, and coming down here on earth with them and being here with them and so on. So there's diversity. But the problem is that whichever um, end time doctrine that you subscribe to, I often find believers who come to me with questions who are actually afraid and worried because of what they think is going to happen at the end, based on their understanding of the scripture. And this is why 
within that diversity in the evangelical Christianity, I'm more concerned about not so much about um, what they believe, but more about what they're thinking and feeling. And often the end time theology drives them to fear. And when that happens, I think they're misguided. Because the purpose of the end time theology in the Bible is not to generate fear, but to give us assurance and peace. Because when God gave these words to them, and in other parts of the New Testament regarding the end, it's for those Christians who are persecuted because of their faith. Sometimes they, they had to put their life um, on the line to follow Jesus. And, and instead of worrying and fearing about it, the end time the theology is meant to give them hope and encouragement and give them boldness in the midst of the suffering and hardship and persecution they were experiencing. So the end time theology is meant to drive us to live for today and live well today. There's another conjunction that's found in verse 6. Let's start from verse 4. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Second conjunction is, so then. The end and the second coming of Christ will come like a thief. And it should be a concern for those who are in darkness. But the fact is, you are not in darkness, but you are in the light. You are children of the light. So for you, Paul says, there's nothing for you to worry about. Only thing that you should be concerned about is verse 6 again. Are you awake? So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Be awake. Stay sober. What does it mean to stay awake? and be sober. One question you can ask yourself is, well, what are you investing your life in? What are you investing your time in? Energy, effort, heart. That shows you whether you are awake and sober and aware of what's going to happen at the end. Paul continues on with this idea. And then, he sums it up with another conjunction, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Again, therefore. And what does he encourage? Encourage one another. Build each other up. Here again, the end time theology is about the now and how we live in the now and what that means is it's about living well in relationship with other and others and other believers uh, in faith. This is another reason why I am against those who, with their end-time theology, divide up God's church. The end-time theology is meant for us to encourage one another, to build each other up, to encourage them in the midst of their hardship and suffering and death-like experiences to, to remind them that there is life. You are children of the light, so whatever darkness may come, you don't have to worry. Be buried in darkness because the end is coming. And that's why I think some of the end-time theology is misguided because, or those who subscribe that, to that, those theologies because they end up just dividing up the church and become proud and, and, and overly confident of the end-time theology that they believe in. And they end up just hurting the church more than building it. Building it. And then in chapter 5 comes the verses so many of us have come to know and love. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This encouragement that we know really well is given 
in the context of the doctrine about the end. It's all about living well because of the end that's coming. So in knowing that, rejoice always, no matter what happens. Pray continually, knowing that the end is coming so that you can stay awake through prayer and stay awake uh, and be sober through prayer. Give thanks in all circumstances because we will see Jesus one day and the end will be good for us. So now, in the now, give thanks in all circumstances. As you can see, the end time theology is not to, meant to generate fear and anxiety or feed more unnecessary and unhelpful curiosity on our part. It's about giving inspiration to live well today. So Paul, in, in closing his letter, 1 Thessalonians, gives one final reminder and motivation for the now because of the end that's coming. Verse 23, chapter 5. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that final motivation? About the end, you will meet Jesus. So live for the day when you will see Jesus. And let that moment that's coming motivate you to live well, be better, grow in our sanctification, become whole in our spirit, soul, and body, so that on that day when you stand before Jesus, you will be blameless. And I will uh, rephrase that in my own words. I'll say this. On that day, Christ will be pleased with you. You will be pleased with you. And you will be overwhelmed with joy because you've been working and towards this end. And you've been living for this end. You've been building your life and one another for this end. So when on that day you stand before Jesus and see him and meet him, that it will be a moment of joy, celebration, and an and amazing end. A big one celebration that you will partake in. That's the reason why God has told us about the end. So friends, let's live today in the now for the end that's coming to us. In Jesus' name. Amen.